Hello and welcome travel enthusiasts to our Get Paid to Travel introduction webinar series. My name is Acacia Woods Chan and I'm the founder of Ethnic Ties, which is hosting this and the full course on getting paid to travel. Now, let me just say first thing, in no way, shape or form is this webinar intended to be a definitive guide on all of the ways that you can get paid to travel and also I want to also point out, this is not a quick fix or a get rich or get to traveling quick scheme. That's the last thing this is. On the contrary, I've been traveling for the last 15 years and I've traveled to over 40 countries and want to share the resources that I've used to be able to do so. And just to note, this is a practice that I've built over almost a lifetime and I'm here to share with you. So if you're ready and you're interested in traveling and or you have recent and prior travel experience, then this is perfect for you and I definitely welcome you and I'm excited to have you. In this introductory webinar, we will get to know about who I am and also who Ethnic Ties is. You'll also learn ways to monetize your travels and last but not least, you'll learn ways that you can get paid with Ethnic Ties. Please do keep in mind, this is the introduction webinar. We are going to give the basics of some of the ways that we've seen to be able to get paid to travel abroad. And again, this is not a definitive list and will be updated and growing. After this introduction webinar, we are going to go deeply into the actual full course. And so this is a monthly webinar where you are going to be able to see some of the introductions and then you can also access the full course which is available on our Thinkific platform, you will be able to choose your topic specific interest that most closely applies to your interest, or you can choose the bundle and get a little bit of a discount. And so again, we will be having the introduction for free every month, and then you can also access the bundle or the individual courses as you like. All right, let's move on. The first thing that I'd like to do is get your honest and personal opinion, and you don't have to share with me, on this quote, live with no excuses and travel with no regrets. What, if anything, does this mean to you? Does this resonate with you? If you need to, please feel free to pause right now and express yourself and how this relates. Ready to move on? Okay, great. In this section, I wanna introduce myself and let you know a little bit more about me. I'm some lady that you saw on the internet who's telling you that you can get paid to travel. And so let me introduce myself. My name is Acacia Woods Chan and I am an enthusiastic traveler, educator, and entrepreneur. I have been traveling over the last 15 years and have been able to leverage my experience in education, my passion for youth advocacy, for indigenous and traditional cultures and language to be able to travel to many different places. Many of the places that I've gone to have been subsidized, meaning that I didn't pay for all of the parts of my travel. And so that includes maybe having a round trip airfare paid for, that includes potentially having my lodging paid for, and this most recently, I actually had all of those paid for and also got paid. So I am from the San Francisco Bay Area. I am mixed ethnicity, African and Chinese American, and that's gonna, play into some of my travel experience a little bit later. And I'm developing Ethnic Ties, which is a platform for upcoming travelers to be able to connect with experienced travelers in preparation for their upcoming international adventure and travels. The reason why I'm developing this platform is because in many of my travels, I have gone to unknown areas. Most of my travels have been solo or if not in organized groups, however, in many opportunities, I didn't know much of the local context, including the political background, social historical context, even things down to the exchange rate. And so in preparing, not only was I preparing for the actual part of travel, which there's so many different parts of that. In addition, I found myself getting off work and then having to have an extra full-time job in preparing for my international trips. And so this was part of the impetus in creating Ethnic Ties, and you'll hear more about that and how you can also get involved and get paid to share about your travel experiences a little bit in the future, all right? So one of the things that people are really interested in includes how I've been able to travel so extensively without using my own money. 
And that has been the best part, let me tell you. And so some of the international travel that I've done includes shorter trips, longer journeys. It may have been solo, with a group, with an organization, related to work. The short and quick answer is that I prioritized it. That was about it. If I saw an opportunity to travel, I took it hands down. Definitely, I always had a priority to align my travels with my school or with my work or whatever kind of personal pursuits and passions that I had. And so that's basically the short answer. Any single time there was an opportunity to travel, I took it. That was that. And I don't know if I would say that that was the best advice because sometimes I have lost jobs. I have become estranged with uh, friends and um you know, there's two sides to it. So at a certain point, it made me more of an attractive candidate later on. And then I also was able to create a number of different communities globally. And I think what it comes down to is that you really have to decide for you what is a priority and when and where it makes sense for you to be able to travel. So that's the short answer. The longer answer is this. And so I'm going to explain a little bit about the places where I've been and how I've been able to do that over the last 15 years. So here I was a college student and I was living in Salvador Bahia for about six months. I was able to see a number of the local area and also travel to the interior. I made a number of different friends and prioritized being able to get to know locals and actually have had the opportunity to go back a number of times and brought two different groups to Bahia as well. So... Again, I was at this time very young and I think very impressionable and was able to be flexible with my schedule because I was in college. Shortly thereafter, I was able to go to Honduras for three weeks on a microfinance trip and learn from local farmers who were developing their intergenerational families and we got to hear about some of their challenges and some of their successes in creating sustainable businesses. How did I do all this? Because again, I was a student and any opportunity that there was, I definitely took advantage. So I took advantage of study abroad on a three different occasions, locally and internationally. So for any students or anybody who has this opportunity, I would definitely suggest that you leave this opportunity open and at least get to know more about the options, all right? So when I went to Brazil, it was with the University of California's Education Abroad Program, which is a great and amazing resource that has a number of study abroad programs in almost the majority of the world's countries, and so definitely worth looking into. Now, with this opportunity, I did spend a little bit of my own funds because my financial aid, which I mean, at this point turned into student debt, was applied, and so I did have funds that were able to cover it. And I made sure that I was able to cover my costs while I was there. But the reason why I left early, because I wanted to stay and extend my program was because I got broke and homesick. So I came home. In addition, I also made sure to be part of Global Student Association. So when I went to Honduras, it was with an organization called Microfinance Brigades. Being within the Global Economics Department, I saw that that was a line of development that I was going to want to have for my personal and professional and career development. Um, when we went on this program, we had about a year to plan. And so as soon as we knew that this was a possibility, we started fundraising. And for a group of about 11, we were able to fundraise all of the costs of the program. And then we just had to come up with our own flights. In addition, I was able to travel locally, so by being part of groups like the African Black Student Alliance or Student Union Assembly, then I was able to utilize my relationships with associations and with different student organizations to travel abroad as well, and to locally to places like DC or LA. I was able to travel to China for a month with a group of other young Chinese Americans. I had the majority of my program paid for, which included round-trip airfare from SFO to Guangzhou, Canton. Also, round-trip airfare from Canton to Beijing and back. I was there for about a month and had all of my lodging and transportation taken care of, in addition to about three banquets per day, which is like kind of a little bit too much. And for all of this, I paid $600. Why? Because I got a scholarship. So I've always been looking for ways to not have to pay for my own trips. 
I also was able to travel to the Ecuador and Amazon, which I will say was probably the highlight of all of my travel experiences. And we stayed for about three weeks with a local indigenous group named the Achuar in exchange of our different ways of building pedagogical and ed educational backgrounds. I was also able to travel to Paraguay for about three weeks and paid nothing. And so all expenses, including my round trip airfare, including lodging, transport, local transportation, and food was all paid for. How was I able to do that as an adult? Well, number one, going to China, I was able to get into a program called In Search of Roots, which is a heritage program for Chinese American young adults who are looking to connect with their ancestral roots. And so I was able to do this with a group of 24 other Chinese Americans, and I will say that it changed my life, and it didn't change my pocket too much. So that was really exciting. With going to Paraguay, I was able to do that through being one of two mentors who were going to guide and basically be a chaperone to these youth who were going to Paraguay with the State Department to engage in community development projects. And lastly, I was able to go to the Ecuador and Amazon through going to graduate school. Now, I don't know if I would recommend this to everybody because when I saw that they had this program, when I was just looking on the internet, which I'm always doing, always looking for travel resources all the time. And so I found this program, but you had to be matriculated in the graduate school program. You had to be part of the program. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna be part of the program. And so that heavily influenced where I went to graduate school, which in retrospect, I don't know if it was the best idea, however, it turned out to be great. And again, going to the Amazon was one of the highlights of my travel experience. So I would definitely do it again. So moving on, as a professional, I was able to travel to China for a month where we went to five different regions in China and also went to Mongolia, all expenses paid. So this included, again, round trip airfare. This included the local transportation, lodging, and food. In addition, I was able to travel to Ghana also as a professional. There, I was able to travel to about six different regions for, again, a month. This included all round trip airfare. This included my incidentals, local incidentals. This included local transportation and lodging. And actually, this time, we got a stipend for souvenirs that were going to be culturally based or help in our practice. And more recently, I was able to travel to Santiago, Chile as an educator and was able to travel there for two weeks. All of my expenses were paid again. So round trip airfare, lodging, local transportation, food. And this time I was actually able to get paid a salary. And so how was I able to do this? Number one, through my experience as an educator, there's a program called the Fulbright Haze, which is again through the State Department, where I was able to leverage my experience as an educator to go to China and to go to Ghana. As a Stanford representative, then I was able to leverage my past experiences and kind of culminate them to create, to deliver a program on design thinking and innovation for youth. And then last but not least, the way that I'm continuing to build on traveling extensively and through subsidized measures is going to be through sharing experiences like what I'm doing with you all now. So again, just to be clear, when I say get paid to travel, I'm including in-kind payments, including subsidized flights or free flights, any kind of subsidized or expenses paid, lodging, local transportation, food, incidentals, materials, or any kind of thing like that. And I will say that it's taken me about 15 years to build up to this point. And so it is a thing that is a development of that has been a development of my practice. And at this point, I would love to share the experiences with you all. I know that we're gonna have a number of different backgrounds. And so I'm touching on a number of different ways that you can build your own craft, leverage your own passions, your own experiences to build a travel life that you like. And one of those includes working with ethnic ties. And so to give you a little bit of background about ethnic ties, before we move on to the different ways about monetizing your travels, we are a travel platform that supports travel within the diaspora, so within communities of color, as well as supporting experienced travelers in their professional pursuits within the industry. Now, this does not mean that everybody has to become a travel agent. However, what we want to do is we do want to give experienced travelers the opportunity to leverage their experiences, which they're the experts in, monetizing and professionalizing their own travel experiences, and then preparing upcoming travelers. 
And so some of the ways that we do this include through our travel ambassadors program where people who do have experiences can create their own travel consultant profile and share it with upcoming travelers. And some of the impetus for this again was through my experiences and through the experiences of many of my friends, colleagues, coworkers, and what have you, continuing to not know necessarily how to prepare for their travels. And of course, there's a number of different ways that you may pick up a travel guidebook or look on YouTube. However, number one, what we want to do is we want to provide customized and personal based travel preparation because just because I may have lived in Brazil and I may be going to support somebody else going to Brazil, it doesn't mean that we have the same preferences just because we're going to the same international location. And so we want to provide customized, relevant, and very much curated and authentic experiences for upcoming travelers by leveraging the experiences of experience and past travelers or locals as well. Another way that we do this is through webinars and trainings. And so we really want to be able to expand what travel looks like. And so in so doing, and I'll in so doing, we're talking about the different forms of travel, not just as a form of luxury or leisure, but as a tool of professional development and career advancement. And so we are going to leave the resources to all of these at the end and in your follow-up email and are really excited to get into the juice of it. And if you have any questions about into the juice of it. Lastly, we're also creating a travel community for people who may not necessarily want to be monetizing their traveler travels or have don't have the experience yet. They can also join our travel networks. They can also join our travel community with Mighty Networks to be able to just share tips and tricks about certain things. So for instance, if there are different nuances about travel, maybe you're a vegan or vegetarian, maybe you're traveling with children or elders. Maybe you're a curly girl traveler and want to see some of the best ways and best products that you can maintain your own personal preferences while you travel abroad. And so these are where we can exchange that type of information. All right. So definitely looking forward to sharing all of those resources in your follow up email at the end of this introduction webinar. So thank you for giving me the time to share about who I am and how I've been able to travel. My question for you now is what is your favorite part of traveling? Is it personal? Is it to build on a practice that you have? Is it more cultural? What are some of the ways that you want to be able to travel? And again, if you'd like more time, please do feel free to pause and take some moments to express yourself. Great. Some of the main ways that we have documented to see how you can get paid or get in-kind payments for your travels include four different areas. And again, this is not definitive. This is what we have seen and what we've used. And so I welcome more suggestions and would definitely love to speak with you if you have more resources. So number one, we have travel vlogging or blogging. Number two, we have different travel programs. Number three, we have travel marketing. And number four, we have being a travel consultant with Ethnic Ties. So at this point, please do, if you need to, please do pause. Go get a pen and paper or whatever kind of recording device that you might use because we're going to go fast and quick and we want you to be able to get the most out of this introduction webinar. And remember that if you want to go more in depth, please do sign up for the topic specific course or for the bundle. All right, you ready? Let's go. So as of last year in 2019, as per the United States Travel Association, the travel industry was a $2.1 trillion industry and provided for 15 million jobs. Now, this includes all different parts, including airfare, lodging, hotels, transportation, all of these different food sources, travel agents. And so, do you think that the market still has room for you? Yes, absolutely. And I'll say the best way that you can create your market presence is by specializing in your own niche, okay? And so, in some of the ways of doing travel vlogging, video logging, or blogging, one of the biggest places is YouTube. So YouTube is always an opportunity, and I will use this time to give a shameless plug. Please do make sure to visit Miss Acacia Travels, our own travel vlog, where we talk about our experiences in Ghana, in Chile, and we'll be adding as our usership and our experiences grows. So this is something that you can do, and I will say, information is so valuable that when people are preparing to travel, 
They want to know what the experiences of other people may have been. Now, everybody's different, so people might want to know luxury travel, family travel, whatever the case, budget travel, business travel. And so if you have these experiences, people want to hear from them. You need 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers within a 12-month period to start monetizing. Another way that you can do travel blogging is with podcasts or travel vlogging or sharing of your travel experiences includes with podcasts. And so there are so many different podcasts and right now there's so much opportunity and technology to be able to share your experiences. And with both of these, you also can get paid on Patreon or other web-based platforms that are basically uh, community funded. Another option that you have includes being a content writer for organizations like Lonely Planet or National Geographic. However, I will say that this opportunity does require a little bit more of a background um, and they may ask for you to have lived abroad for maybe two years or to have a background in journalism or in writing. And so while these industries are becoming more deconstructed, there generally does require a certain background. Okay. Another option to get paid to travel or get in-kind payments to be able to travel includes leveraging your personal and professional expertise and different associations that you may have. And so one of the ways that you can do that, I will say that I've gone on the state, I've traveled with State Department a number of times. One way is through Fulbright, which many people might think, oh, that's very academic based, which at a certain point, yes, it is. And I will say that it's very competitive because every year they only grant 8,000 travel opportunities. However, if you have expertise in your industry or in your field, then definitely there are a number of opportunities, including the second one, the Fulbright Specialist Program. And they also have a program called Fulbright to Study at Large, which is an interesting choice of description, where you can leverage your own experiences, create a proposal, create your budget, and then pitch it to them. And if they like it, and if it looks thorough, then you know, you may be you may be one of the 8,000 people who gets granted their trip. And some of these are three to six weeks. Some of these are three to six years. More typically is about nine to 12 months. Another way that you can do that is through commercial travel. And so there's a number of different ways, including wolfing, which is working on an outdoor farm. And so in exchange for your expertise or your volunteer help, basically, then you can usually get bed and breakfast and food now, these all have different levels of comfort and preferences. And so when I lived in Brazil and after the end of the program, we went into the interior, into the rural area, and were able to meet farmers or local ecological experts who are interested in, develop, in developing no waste zones, plastic free zones. And so we worked the land for a couple of weeks while in exchange, they gave us a place to stay and food. Another way that you can do this is by being a tour leader. So through different programs like Youth Ambassadors Program like I did in Paraguay, and also through different programs which may be more of a commercial side. So you may go to Carnival or any of the other big, big travel institutions and say, hey, I have a group of 15 family members or coworkers or what have you that are interested on going on this cruise and I can get them to sign up at this price or whatever the case, if you will give me a free trip or if you'll give me discounted or I want to have discounted and get discounted for them as well. And so it does take a little bit of entrepreneurial spirit. However, it's totally doable and people do this all the time. Another way that you can do this commercially is through teaching English abroad. And so in our webinar, we'll give you information on this and a number of other different programs that we have tried and true through our global and growing network that you can travel abroad and teach and get paid. Last but not least with this is heritage programs, including Birthright Africa and other ones. We know a very popular one is Birthright Israel. However, I was able to go on a birthright trip through uh, my Chinese lineage. And so there's a number of different ones. Um, Japan has one every year. Um, there's one for Greece, Italy, and a number of other associations that actually might be local or more local to you than you might have otherwise known. So definitely worth looking into. Okay, next. Another way for you to be able to travel is through affiliate sponsorships and partnerships. And I will say that this section does entail a little bit more of an entrepreneurial spirit. And so this is really asking you to leverage and then to develop, propose, and pitch 
some of your professional experiences that you may be able to leverage. So what does this look like? Number one, we have affiliate marketing. So with organizations like Priority Pass, how many people know what Priority Pass is? I'm going to show you right now. So I actually just became a member of Priority Pass and I'm so excited. Basically, this is a network of 1,300 international airport lounges where regardless of your destination or your origin or even what airline you fly with, you can be able to access these lounges, which some of them will have benefits, including strong Wi-Fi, free drinks and food, showers, or what have you. You have to look for every... You have to look at the particular lounge to see what works best for you. However, if you go down here, you can see network and you can see affiliate. And so you also have the opportunity to be able to be a to be able to earn commission for sales that you make in enrolling people to the Priority Pass membership. So what does this look like? Once you are able to enroll somebody, and it says right here, you can earn up to eight fourteen dollars US. For enrolling somebody now if you are someone who travels extensively or you have friends that you travel with then this is something that you can leverage already because you're already traveling right and then you can get a free membership and then they can also have the access and you can share with each other and be kind of creative about that another way is through sponsorships that you can get from different organizations hotels or any other organization that is already established within the travel industry and so for instance if you're interested in traveling for instance to an international conference or event then you may be able to say you may be able to approach some of these established organizations and say hey we would like for you to sponsor us and we'd like to stay at your hotel and you have to offer them something. So for instance, if there's a lot of social media heads out there who have a lot of followers, then you might be able to leverage that and say, if you are able to sponsor us going here and we're able to stay at your hotel, then we can offer so much viewership and such a different type of reviews for your services and for your products. And I can offer, you know, if you have 10,000 viewers on, on, if you have 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, then you can leverage that. If you have... 2,000 likes or 2,000 views per day on Instagram, then you can also leverage that and say that you're kind of becoming like a nano influencer. Another opportunity for these with the entrepreneurial spirit is through different partnerships. And so for instance, an organization called Travel Noir, which is basically a black millennial platform for all things travel related, you can go here and see that you can win Afro Nation Puerto Rico tickets. And then you can also go down and see that on the bottom it says partnerships. If you are interested in pitching an opportunity and getting your consultancy into their publications, then you can also, and getting paid for your publications, then you can partner with them. And it's so simple. And I will say that a number of organizations have these. It's just that many people don't necessarily know how to or go about leveraging these opportunities. Okay, so last but not least, you can also get paid working with ethnic ties. And so what we want to do is take out the ambiguity in your travel preparation. And so by joining our travel ambassador program where you sign up at Mighty Networks, then you will become a pool of deconstructed travel ambassadors or agents that are then able to package your experiences and be able to share them with the up, with upcoming travelers with matching profiles and they're so doing get some commission for yourself. Some of the ways that you can do this also include by getting the professional understanding through our How to Get Paid to Travel webinars and trainings, and also by giving references and referrals, references and referrals, and becoming affiliate marketers of our programs. So if you have any more questions about those opportunities, then please do reach out. And also, if you want to get tips, tricks, draft emails, and templates from what we've done, then please do sign up either for the individual course that you're interested in or for the bundle, in which case you can get a discount. And again, these are running and available on Thinkific. We will be doing the intro in a live version if you're available at the time or through this pre-recorded one every single month. And so we'll send a follow up with all of this information and about information to sign up for the Ethnic Ties Travel Community, which is through Mighty Networks. So I want to say the last thing before we go, you are the expert of your own experiences, and now is the time to leverage your experiences to create the life that you want.
So thank you so much for all of your time. It has been such a pleasure. I appreciate you for all of your interest. I will definitely be sending a follow-up email with this information for your review, including ways to sign up for our large course, our full course. And we also invite you to follow us at our, on our IG at Ethnic Ties or our YouTube at Miss Acacia Travels. Please do subscribe to our Mighty Network so you can just be part of the growing travel community. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us at acacia at ethnicties.org. So thank you so much and looking forward to working more closely with you. Ciao.